Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Susan Spangler, the owner of the Pilates Plus Wellness Center, and we're getting together today to take you through a routine using the tennis ball. This is just an ordinary tennis ball. We're basically using it for muscular release and for the alignment of the feet. So we'll do a little routine first, starting where we're working on your feet, and then we'll take it to the mat and work on your shoulders and a little bit on your hamstrings and then the glutes. And the nice thing about this routine is it's very portable, a tennis ball you can travel with anywhere you go, and you can do a lot of the work that you need to do on yourself to make your life better. Okay, so we're on the mat. I've chosen to be on a yoga mat just because it grips the ball a little bit better, but you could try that or even a carpeted floor. The ball really won't hold in place too well if you're on a ceramic tile or a wood floor. So pick a good surface, bring the tennis ball to the front of the foot, and before you begin, press down into the ball and grip your toes over the top. You want to stand with your knees facing forward, your head up in line with your spine, and your arms just hanging from your sides. One of the most important things here is to not let the knees roll inward, to keep the knees pointing forward. So it's something that you want to feel in your alignment. Sometimes it's tricky because once you get the ball under your foot, your knees will roll in. So just look at yourself, maybe even the mirror, and line the knees up as though they were headlights and they were beaming forward. So we'll begin. The toes are gripped down over the ball. There's pressure on the ball so that it doesn't slip and we'll lift and lower the toes 10 times. Now if you have longer, take a little more time, that's great. In addition to lifting the toes, try to spread them out and then grip down over the ball. Once you've completed 10 reps at a minimum, stop, let the ball move to the side for a moment and put your foot down on the floor and just explore the feeling and the different sensation of the foot having been a little bit stretched and spread out. Step number two, bring the ball back and now place it a little farther back at the transverse arch. So the ball the first time was a little bit forward. Now we've moved it back, but it is not on the back of the arch. It's still under this front arch of the foot. And then again, stand tall, always give that little gentle pressure down, align the knees forward, line the body up, and then lift and lower the toes. And again, each time the toes come up, try to spread them apart. This really begins to stretch the muscles of the feet, and yet you can feel it in the body, in the back body, in the glutes. After you've done your 10 reps, again, push the ball to the side for a moment and always take this moment of observation. What ends up happening is you start to feel as though the weight is differently distributed and the foot feels flatter. And you start to realize how simple it is to change how grounded you are. Step number three, bring the ball back. And now we move the ball back to the back of your arch, but it is the front of your heel. And that's important to get the different positions. You may have to bend down and align it. Always line your toes up visually and then go back to the basics. Press into the ball, line the body up, kneecaps forward. This time the front of the foot stays down. The ball of the foot is really anchored. Press into the ball at the back of the arch and then again lift and lower the toes. Each time you lift and lower, see if you can spread the toes out. Keep track of your count and try to get to 10 if you can. And again, when you're finished with your reps, just push the ball to the side, come down flat on the foot, and really be an observation of this change that you've made in your body. And then the last step is really easy. Step number four, bring the ball back in, place it right underneath the meat of the heel of your foot right in the center of your foot. So it's right under the heel. Line your toes up visually, knees forward and head up. Press through the back of the body. So feel the glute engage, the hamstring engage. Press down into the ball and lift and lower the toes. Again, kneecaps forward, toes are nice and spread out. Take it through the 10 reps. And then when you're finished, step down to the floor, get even and flat on the feet and start to appreciate now how you've rooted your body down on that side. Sometimes it even feels like your shoulders have shifted and your hips have shifted. And then all you have to do is repeat it on the other foot. 
We'll be back together in a few moments. We'll release the hamstrings next, and we'll also do a little bit of work on your shoulders. I'll see you on the floor. So welcome back. We're now on the floor on our mat, and we're going to take the tennis ball, and then I'll show you the placement, and then we'll get started with the exercise. So placing the ball all the way at the back of the head of the hamstring, which is just in front of the sit bone, We'll lay the leg down long, flat on the mat. And you can't really see the ball much anymore, but the ball stays in that position. Take the hands behind you and sit up as tall as you can, and we'll begin to point and flex the toe. So we'll point the toe and flex the foot. The main thing is we want to be looking at the leg and make sure the heel is lined up behind the foot, that the foot's not rolled outward, for example and the knee lines up with the ankle. So use your arms behind you and sit up tall. If you get into a rounded back posture, you actually really won't feel the tennis ball work at all. So it's very important to sit up nice and tall. So if you have a minute or two, that's great. If you don't and you're in a time rush, but you know you need to stretch your hamstrings, give it at least 20 repetitions. And when that's over, we'll bend the knee and sit up as tall as we possibly can as though a string was pulling the knee up and the head up at the exact same time. And we'll start a new pattern now. We'll go into an internal and an external rotation. If at all it feels like you don't have contact with the ball like you should, you can just push it back just a little bit more. But again, it stays in front of the sit bone at the head of the hamstring. So externally rotate and internally rotate. And it's nice now because it gets a little bit of a wider range through the head of the hamstring. You have this interior rim and then you have this lateral or outer part of the hamstring. And again, when you're finished, take the ball out, lay it on the floor, and just notice how the two sides feel. You should have a big appreciation for the fact that this leg feels flatter, it feels softer, and it feels more relaxed. And there's only one thing left to do. You have to repeat that on the other leg. You do that on your own, and then I'll meet you on the mat, and we'll do a little bit of work with placing the tennis ball up in the shoulder area. Great, so we're on our back now, lengthened out on the mat. We'll use the tennis ball at the neck. So I'll place the ball and show you exactly where to put it. And again, just a reminder, we always want to use a used tennis ball. A new tennis ball might be a little too hard. So we'll place the ball now sort of up above the shoulder and then just rest onto the floor. And again, if you're on your yoga mat, it'll hold the ball there so it doesn't pop out. And once you're in place, you can just place your hand right on your forehead and just take a few breaths and each time you exhale just allow the arm to drop out a little bit more creating a little bit more depth of the ball just so let it relax wherever you can go and if you feel comfortable you can add a little bit of movement to it you can do a few circles in each direction just breathe and release and if you have time, feel free to adjust the ball up or down, in or out, because the area is pretty wide and the tennis ball is only in one portion of it. If you feel like you could slide it down a little bit more, do that. I'd like to caution you though, don't place the tennis ball on your spine. You're going to be outside the spine, toward the elbow or the shoulder. And then of course when you're finished, just take the ball away and allow your body to melt to the floor and just observe how that side feels different. You'll notice your arm drops down, you start to release the tension, and you can appreciate that you still yet need to do the other side. And I'm just going to pop up. I want to thank you for joining us today and for experimenting with the tennis ball. Uh, check out some of our other videos. There may be some, um, some other things in there that you find helpful in terms of release and stretch work. Hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you for joining us.